Hey guys, this is Nick with Phone Arena. I'm here at Mobile World Congress 2015 and the smartphone I have with me is the new Samsung Galaxy S6. In this video, I'll walk you through TouchWiz, the latest version of Samsung's custom interface which runs on the Galaxy S6. Out of the box, the Samsung Galaxy S6 runs Android 5.0 Lollipop, the latest version of Google's operating system. And in fact, even though we have a custom interface here, some of the Lollipop elements are still present, including the camera shortcut on the lock screen as well as the dialer application shortcut. You also have your notifications displayed at a glance in case there are any. But on the lock screen you also get this really conveniently placed weather and time widget. Let's unlock the phone and take a look at the home screen. So here it is, the latest version of TouchWiz. If you have ever used a Samsung Android phone, you will probably be feeling right at home with it because it retains the typical TouchWiz home screen layout with widgets, shortcuts to applications and folders for your apps. There's also a separate application drawer where all your installed applications are organized. You still get this screen powered by Flipboard that works as a feed for the latest news on topics that you might be interested in. It's a nice little feature, although we don't really like the lag that that happens, that occurs when you try to switch to the screen. But anyway, the notification panel works as usual. You pull it down and it gives you access to quick settings, toggle buttons and a slider for your brightness. Of course, you also may edit this in case you don't need some of these shortcuts but want to have others instead. So by now you may have noticed that the new version of Samsung TouchOS doesn't really add much in terms of features. All the great features of the Galaxy S5 are still present, but new ones aren't really here. However, Samsung has indeed improved upon a few key areas. One of them is responsiveness. This is supposed to be the fastest and most responsive version of TouchWiz so far and that's really great to hear. We're hoping that its performance in real life would be excellent, although we still notice a few lags here and there that uh, might have to be fixed at a later time. Another great thing about the latest TouchWiz is that it's more customizable. Samsung has thrown in support for user interface themes and we're about to apply one just to show you what happens. This theme is called Pink, unsurprisingly, and it's one of the many user interface themes that you will be able to download from the Samsung store. To meet the needs of enterprise consumers, Samsung has added Knox, its secure mobile platform. With its help, the user may have two profiles on this device, one for their business needs and one for their personal needs. One feature I cannot demonstrate yet because it's not available is Samsung's mobile payment system. It will launch later this year and it will use the built-in fingerprint scanner to authorize purchases. Now let's take a look at some of the stock applications, for example, the phone app. As you can probably tell, it has been simplified a bit. You don't see any confusing icons anymore, it's just labels of text and tabs. The app has been inspired by Lollipop's stock dialer, as far as we can tell, although Samsung has included a few twists of its own, for example, the option to make a call with a swipe to the right, and and the option to send a text message to someone with a swipe to the left. This is what the call log looks like. This is the list for your favorite contacts. And this is your entire list of contacts, which you can easily search by name. This is the messaging application. Similarly, it has been inspired by Lollipop's messaging app. Although it's nice to know that Samsung has added the ability to put your favorite contacts up here at the top for easier access. This is the on-screen keyboard. It appears to be very reliable thanks to its great responsiveness. And of course, you have the huge list of emote icons at your disposal. It is really easy to attach an item to your message. Just tap this button and you get a list of your recent pictures as well as further options down here. Here we are at the stock browser on the Samsung Galaxy S6. It's really fast and really responsive. It works quite well. And at the same time, it has all the necessary features that you would expect, such as support for multiple tabs. And uh, if you feel like you want to view the desktop version, that's possible as well. 
This is the redesigned gallery. Let's open an image and see what editing options we get out of the box with the built-in gallery. So you can do the basics to rotate or crop an image, but you can also open the more powerful photo editor and adjust manually all of these controls. Let's see what else we get here. Oh, we have the option to add various effects to the image. That's really nice. This will look great for your images and for your selfies. This is the S-Health application. It's your personal activity monitor and fitness tracker. It counts the number of steps you've made, how many hours of sleep you got. It can also measure your heart rate using the built-in heart rate sensor. Whenever you want to listen to some music, the music player is at your disposal. Here's what the interface looks like. This is the now playing screen. We noticed that the settings menu has been redesigned. It is simpler now, which is a good thing. But you still get the many sound adjustment settings that uh, you had in the previous versions of TouchWiz. To get a weather forecast, just use Samsung's preloaded weather application. It has all the essential information you might need, including a daily and a hourly forecast. And this was our quick overview of the latest version of TouchWiz. For more details about it and about the Galaxy S6, just check out our website, phonearena.com.